All right, it's good to be with you all today. I uh, used to teach in this part of the country over at Whitworth College, so it's great to be here with uh, folks from K House. Uh, Chuck and I used to get together occasionally when I was a professor there, and it's been nice to be able to renew acquaintance recently as we've been trading recently published books with each other through the mail. Uh, I'm going to talk today about my book uh, called Signature in the Cell, DNA and the Evidence for Intelligent Design. And uh, the lecture today will actually sketch the, the thesis, the argument of that book. Uh, I, I'd like to begin by just uh, putting the debate about intelligent design in some historical context. Last year marked the 150th anniversary of the publication of The Origin of Species. In fact, just a few months ago, it was November 24th, 2009, and the occasion of that uh, anniversary caused a lot of reflection worldwide, especially in the academic world, about the, the legacy of Darwin. What did he teach us? And some, some scientists and some scholars said that he, of course, gave us the idea, the theory of evolution. He gave us the idea of natural selection. But principally, the, 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 the legacy for which he is best known, according to many scholars, is that by giving us the theory of evolution and the idea of natural selection, he refuted the classical argument from design, the idea that nature bears witness to a designing intelligence to, in fact, uh, the, the, as the, the classical medievals put it, the intelligence of God. And, uh, and, and many Darwinian scholars have made this point very, very pointedly. Uh, one is Francisco Ayala, who is a past president of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. He put it this way. He says, the functional design of organisms and their features would seem to argue for the existence of a designer. But it was Darwin's greatest accomplishment to show that the directive organization of living or beings can be explained as the result of a purely undirected mechanism, natural selection, without any need to resort to a creator or any other external agent. Uh, as he put it more succinctly in one of his articles, Darwin gave us design without a designer. Uh, the famous evolutionary biologist from England, uh, Richard Dawkins, who's also a public spokesman for Darwinism all around the world, has expressed the, the same idea. He said that biology is the study of complicated things that give the appearance of having been designed for a purpose. If you were all college students, I'd ask you to identify the, the key word in that quotation. It's, it's obviously appearance. That for the Darwinist, uh, things look as though they were designed, they have the appearance of being designed, but that appearance is actually an illusion because there is a purely undirected mechanism that can mimic the powers of a designing intelligence, but which is not in any way guided or directed, and that mechanism is Darwin's mechanism of natural selection.